So under this section on inspection and testing of electrical equipment, we are going to be looking at the low voltage switches. So we are going to look at um, both the physical or mechanical inspection and electrical inspection or test on these low voltage switches. So first, what we need to do is to compare the nameplate information wherever the nameplate is on the, the switch. As you can see here, the information here should match what we have in the specification sheet. Or we should compare what we have on the nameplate information with what we are expected to have on the drawings, the electrical drawings of that particular circuitry. So when they match, fine. That means we are good to go. So there are a few basic parameters that we actually need to look at. Check the voltage to see that um, the voltage rating of that particular switch is the same with what is specified in the specification sheet or it is the same with the expected voltage in that section of the circuitry in your circuit diagram okay or drawings then next we need to look at the amperage to see that the the amperage or the amp the amps rating of that particular switch will match the expected loading of that particular circuitry as in the case of uh, uh, the drawings or it should match what is specified for that particular switch so those are the operating parameters that are very important for us to check that is the voltage ratings and the current rating of the switch then we need to also look at the physical condition and the mechanical condition of the switch which means that we need to look around if there are any visible signs of death uh, dent if there are visible signs of stress or strain on any part of the, the internal part of the switch then we also need to check out for signs of discoloration that could be an indication of a uh, overloading or signs of uh, stress mechanical stress and then we need to look at the condition of the movable parts of the mechanism the operating mechanism look at them to see that uh, there are no visible signs of distress in any of them if there are any visible signs then we need to take all the necessary measures to ascertain the cause of those stresses or stress and then, uh, if possible, rectify it. So the anchorage, that is the the hold down boots. Okay, we need to ascertain that they are firm. As you can see, this is holding this particular switch to the wall. So we want to be sure that they are firm. Not that during switching, the, the switch will shake off its anchor. So if it is one that is installed vertically, we also want to look at uh, the hold down boots to be sure that they are fine. Then the alignment, especially of the door to the panel, we want to see that it is properly aligned such that uh, we will not have stress in closing the switch box. Then the the at the, the grounding cable what also ascertain that it is firm where it is connected okay as we'll see later we may even talk it to see that it is actually talked to the right talk level then clearances and uh, we need to ascertain the clearances in accordance with recommendations of especially the manufacturer to see that all clearances they are within tolerable limit, especially the clearance between the the knife edge, okay, when the switch is closed and the sitting. So we need to be sure that they are uh, within tolerable limit. We also want to be sure that the unit is clean, very clean. If it is not, we we'll do all we can. We 
can vacuum clean it to be sure that it is clean. Remember that dirt conducts can uh, reduce the insulation insulating capacity of the insulators, okay, and cause phase bridge or bridge between the phases of the switch. So we want to be very sure that the unit is very very clean. No cobwebs that will accumulate debt that will increase the conductivity between the phases then the blade alignment with the settings okay we want to be sure that they are pro properly aligned so that during closing we will not have stress in closing the switch so we want to check of we want to check also the the travel stop that it is actually stopping at the appropriate point okay and uh, the operating mechanism the mechanical part of the switch is uh, okay operating fine then the fuses we also want to be sure that the fuses they are of the appropriate rating for that particular f uh, switch that is it should be able to withstand the expected load on the switch so we want to compare what we see the rating we see on the fuse with what is specified okay and also with the rating on the nameplate then we also want to be sure that it matches the short circuit study and the coordination study okay that is if this particular switch now is coordinated with other switches in the circuitry we want to be sure that uh, the uh appropriate for that particular circuit that is it will coordinate fine with other circuits uh, with other switches that is if it is expected that this fuse should open first before the fuse downstream then we should be sure that the ratings here is less than what we have downstream then we want to verify that uh, the fuses they have the appropriate support such that uh, they could not be shaken off their support the support is firm so we want to physically hold and shake the support to see that it is firm okay and uh, the integrity of it and especially of that of the contact okay that is the contact between the fuse and the holder is firm enough such that uh, during operations hacking will not occur at those uh, points okay at this point we want to be sure that they are firm okay then if there are interlocks we want to also verify that the interlocks are working properly then the face barriers we want to be sure that they are there and uh, they are of the appropriate rating so these face barriers they are usually there to prevent shorting between the phases okay to insulate the space between the phases and as you are closing the circuit as the contact is making those arc that will be formed you see this barrier is to prevent the arc from jumping from one face to the other so we want to be sure that those phase barriers they are there then those movable parts we want to be sure also that they are properly lubricated if not, we want to apply the recommended lubrication on those movable parts. Okay. Then finally, we want to look at the indicating devices, okay, like the vote meters, the arm meters, and the correct meters to be sure that they are working one and that they have the appropriate range for that particular circuitry. So we want to look at uh, the electrical test that we can carry out on the switch. So first, we need to arm ourselves with an appropriate test equipment, a test meter like this uh, MTR105, Mega MTR105, we do the work for us, okay? Most of the tests that, uh, all of the tests that we want to carry out, the insulation, the resistance, continuity, and uh, all the tests, we can actually perform all of them with uh, this particular meter so the first test that we are going to be looking at is uh, the resistance test 
and that we are going to do on all the booted uh, connections okay so what we need to do with the meter we need to turn the selector switch to this milliohm range that is the low resistance test uh, range or section of the meter okay so next we look at the booted connections these are the booted connections okay so what we need to do is to verify your resistances at those connection points i remember we want the resistances to be as low as much as possible so we want to verify that this the that is the purpose of this low resistance test is to ascertain that this conductor these cables okay these cables all of these cables they are making firm contact with where it is connected to so what we need to do in this case now is that after making the appropriate selection here we will put one of the probe we can put one of the probe here and then the other probe on the exposed part of the conductor so what we are actually doing in this case is testing the resistance between the conductor and the part where it is connected to so like we said we want the resistance to be as low as possible so that uh, that is zero if it is zero the better for us so that the flow of current will not be impeded okay as it is flowing through the circuitry so we'll do it for all of these booted connections to see that there are no resistance then we can also do it at this uh, the contact between the knife edge and the settings okay so which means that we can place our probe here and then the other one here that will help us to test the integrity of the contact between this uh, the knife and uh, the knife edge and uh, the settings so that is what we want to do to test the resistance to see that we have very low resistance at those booted connections okay then next we'll measure the contact resistance which is what we have discussed earlier okay we'll put uh, we can place one of the probe here and then the other one here that will give us the contact resistance one year one year give us the contact resistance one year one year give us the contact resistance so if it is zero the better for us we can still test the contact resistance of these fuses to be sure that the fuses they are firmly seated in their orders that they are not free because if it is loose the resistance will uh, go up so if it is zero we expect it to be zero anyway if it is zero the better for us then the next that we'll need to do is to perform the insulation resistance insulation resistance between phases and between phase and ground so what we need to do here is to switch this to this section which is the mega ohm test section that is the insulation test section so the test voltage that we are to use will make the selection okay so since it's uh, low volts we can use uh, it depends on if it is a 415 then we need to use this 1000 volts okay so we'll see the recommended uh, or better still we can use what is recommended for our installation or by the equipment manufacturer so what we do in this case we test the insulation between the phases and the phase to ground as we said earlier okay so you can check the description below for a link on how to carry out insulation tests so one probe can be here and the other probe here then we inject the test voltage this is between phase a and b then between phase a and c between phase b and c okay then between a and ground between b and ground and between C and the ground so we want the insulation to be as high as much as possible so if we do not have any insulation value recommended by the manufacturer of the switch or our establishment okay we can then use this table so here are the ratings of the various the voltage ratings of the various, the switch okay so since we are dealing with low voltage we are talking of something between 
250 and uh, 600 volts. So here are the test voltages that we can use, 500 and uh, 1000. And this is the minimum uh, insulation resistance that we expect between phases and between phase and ground, 25 mega ohms and 100 mega ohms. So we expect something, we expect the insulation to be higher than these values. Okay, we expect the solution to be higher than these values. So if we get something lower, then we need to check for the reasons for that low insulation resistances.